All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, I will give you a brief introduction to, to a project called FinGen after showing you the hello from the Thermo Fisher um, legal team. So, um, in other words, so what, what I'm going to tell you about is, is a project where we have put together uh, or up uh, in the middle of putting together half a million fins and genotyping everybody and linking uh, uh, the individuals to, to the health registry data available in Finland as in other Nordic countries. But let's first take a step back and, and ask the question, why are we doing this in Finland? Why are we interested in Finnish genetics? And it's really these four components that come together in, in Finland, and sorry for boasting a little bit about my native country, but, but, but it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a population history that we have. I have one slide on that. And then it's the fact that there are the long tradition of, of, of biobanking material in Finland. And, and we've been pushing the, the genomic data production for a long time together with linking to the health registry. So Finnish uh, population history in 20 seconds is, is, is here. Uh, many of the individuals who moved around tens of thousands or, or thousands of years ago, some of the un perhaps unfortunate ones turned to the north and came to Finland and inhabited uh, the country over, over decades after the ice melted, of, uh, after the ice age. And the first permanent settlements were in the, in the coastline, so for a longer time that's where we had uh, permanent settlement. We were also the back country or the backyard of Sweden for hundreds of years. And the Swedish king in the 16th century thought that maybe it's a good idea to have some people inhabit also the, the eastern border of the country and the northeastern. So that's where the second wave of settlement from to the east and, and, and northeast happened. And then all, as in many other countries as well, there's been a very rapid uh, population growth, which is now plateauing, by the way. But but anyway, so that this this is this is the in in short the the population history, multiple bottlenecks, and, and a small number of founders originally coming. So how does this show in the genomes of Finns? Uh, it, it shows uh, that in, in a way that there's a lot of structure within Finland. We see very clearly in, in the genotype data the east-west differences, but it also shows that there's a, there's a number of uh, medically interesting variants or mutations that happen to originally come to Finland and if they came they are often enriched in Finland and this has led to a lot of genetic discovery not only in the Mendelian diseases like the Finnish disease heritage uh, diseases but also in, in complex diseases where, where many groups, many research groups have identified either risk variants that are enriched in there uh, <coughs> like the two examples AKT2 and top 3B there but also protective variants. So variants that seem to lower the risk of, of some of the, the common diseases as, 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 as shown in the, in the lower end there. And this is really, again, it's connected to the population history. So when we look genome-wide, we see that there is an enrichment of, of loss of function variants or deleterious mutants variants. And uh, if they happen to come to Finland, so either they if they didn't come, we don't see them in Finnish, Finnish population, but if they happen to come and survive over the, the centuries, uh, they're often enriched. So that gives us some opportunities to perhaps with smaller sample sizes to see effects that are much more difficult to see in, pair, in, in areas where, where the allele frequencies for, for these knockouts are, are, are much lower. So this is led to the idea of let's, what, 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 wouldn't it be nice if we had a good proportion of Finnish population actually genotype? And in came, after a quite a long period of planning, FinGen project with the aim of, of genotyping over 500,000 Finns. And that's really a tremendous population effort. So that's 10% of the population will be genotyped in this, in this uh, uh, study. With the idea that we would get the genetic information for these individuals, and the links to the decades of health register data. I, I give you a couple of examples of how that, how that works in, in the next slides. And we partnered with, with uh, Fisher to, to, to uh, build a, a chip that was customized for the, for the Finnish population. 
we have the imputation, we combine this information into, into a computing uh, area and, and do a lot of uh, association analysis. Actually, uh, right now our routine analysis are combine 1,800 endpoints as we, as we call them. So disease endpoints that have been identified through the registries together with the, with the genome-wide data. And this, this is all done together with the, with the governmental funding through Business Finland in Finland, as, as well as uh, in collaboration with uh, now nine pharma companies who have joined the, the group. So, so this is sort of administratively or data flow wise what FinGen is about. Um, if we look inside of, of, of Finland, it's really also important that we have a strong group of or a chain of, of partners, not only the Finnish funding agencies there, it's the healthcare industry, the biobanks, there are nine biobanks now participating within Finland in this uh, biobank data collection. The universities with med, med schools are all there, the university hospitals, districts, as, as well as pharmaceutical companies. So it really takes a lot of players to put this kind of thing together. So the health registries part. So what are we pooling? Where are we getting the health information for this data? So, so it's really uh, thanks to the decades of administrative monitoring of the Finnish healthcare system that we are, it, it's possible for us to combine these things. So, so every single hospitalization in Finland has been electronically coded and ICD coded since 1969. So that's 50 years of, of, of follow-up right there. In, in one registry that covers the whole nation. Um, um, similarly, every outpatient visit, primary care visit, every cancer in the, in the nation has been uh, recorded from late 50s, as well as then, then drug purchases and drug reimbursements every single time we buy a prescription drug in, in, a, in, a, in a pharmacy, we, it's registered and, and that has been going on since 1995. So all pulled together uh, into the database for these in participants in the FinGen project, all data harmonized because they have been harmonized since the very beginning of these <laughs> registries. And they're connected with the person number that, that we use for everything in Finland. So that's, that's really the, on, on top of the genetic side of things, really the power that we believe that will, will provide us a lot of uh, research opportunities and other opportunities down the line. So what are we really doing now with these registries uh, and the ICD codes? Here are two examples of, of pooling, what we called endpoint development. We have seven clinical groups that go through the, the, the different registries and the codings and, and think about how to best pool the data. So if, for example, for coronary heart disease endpoints, we have the hospital and outpatient registries, the ICD codes, but also there's the procedure codes that, that, that uh, give us opportunities to identify cases. Uh, from the Alzheimer's side, it's more difficult, but, but the drug reimbursement and causes of death uh, information helps us as well. And, and then we are in the process of adding, adding lab values to that. The, the genotype side, we developed together with Thermo Fisher, we developed the Axiom chip version of FinGen chip. This is the version number one here with, with the different components going into the production, not only the imputation backbone grid for, for common variation, but also rare, every single Finnish rare coding variants that have been seen in, in over 20,000 exome sequences that, that we had at the time as well as the, pa the uh, pathogenic variants and pharmacogenetic variants and so forth. So that all came together. And then, then we are taking legacy cohorts that have been collected over the decades. There's about 200,000 samples that have been in the, or that have already been collected over the decades. And then there's active uh, data collection in, in, in Finnish particularly uh, Finnish clinical biobanks now to, to uh, have another 300,000 samples collected. We have data freezes every six months, so 50,000 addi additional ind individuals uh, are pulled together for this uh, every, every six months. We are right now in the, uh, the, the February, this spring uh, data uh, freeze 
included 146,000 individuals, and we impute everybody to a Finnish reference panel of, of for over 4,000 whole genome, deep whole genome sequences in the background. So, so that's the that's the architecture of the of the project. So, what do we see right now? What kind of uh, findings has this so far led to? I I give you one example of, a, of of that that we can we can we can show here, and that's related to to breast cancer. So, so in other words, we have now thousand and eight hundred uh, Manhattan plots. To look at, so it's it's it takes a lot of student power or PI power or postdoc power to really go through this, and we have just started to scratch. And then the challenge, of course, is that it takes about six months to go through the thousand and eight hundred, and then there's a new data freeze. So what should we do with to keep in there? But this this is an example from the breast cancer where we see many of the common variation that that has been seen in much larger sets of breast cancer cases. We in the current data freeze we have about. 4,000 uh, breast cancer cases. But it's interesting that there are, there are uh, also peaks there. There's one in Pulp B2, a well-known breast cancer gene, but, but there is a frame shift variation or frame shift mutation that, that is considerably Finland enriched that is leading the GAN there. So frame shift, known gene, it's known the variant before, now we see it due to uh, good genotyping quality as well as good imputation quality, we see this. Same with check two frame shift, which is again, a, a almost Finland a specific frame shift variant there. Um, so one thing that we are now utilizing this information for is to not only to continue to look at these peaks in, in Manhattan plots, but turn these into prediction questions. Can we utilize now the incoming information to to, to better uh, build prediction models. And, and those who are interested in, in, in prediction models and, and are here tomorrow, and tomorrow afternoon, Nina Mars from the group is, is, is presenting more details about this side of the, of, of the prediction. But this, this is just the example of, of the breast cancer prediction here. So what you see there is that on the, on the left-hand side, you see the hazard ratios. If you're carrying a mutation in the frame shift mutation is check two, you have about double, double your risk. The, the PALP B2 about five times higher risk. Uh, which we see now in the data, which also you know, validates that the genotyping must be working very well. The PRS right now that we can put together utilizing the large uh, summary stats from the large consortium data and then applying them to the finished data is sort of midway there. So if we define a high risk individual as, as an individual being in the highest 10% of the PRS, so we are not very far yet at the tail, you can see that the, the, the risk is, is, is sort of in, in between the check 2 mutation and PALP B2. But all of these things are, are operating in an additional sort of additive manner. So if you happen to be at the tails, the, the risk tails of the, of the PRS and you happen to carry the mutation, the, the risks really shoot up so that with the PALP B2 and, and the PRS combined, it's not a whole many individuals anymore in that group since PALP B2 frame shift is relatively rare, but, but people have almost three out of four women have breast cancer by the age of, or age of uh, 65 in there. So these are really serious things also to start thinking how to, how to uh, put that uh, information back into healthcare. Um, it's not only about FinGen, we are now working also to pull together other biobank data around the world. And, and here is a, a, a list of, of, of group of biobanks that, that, that we are building up now, a global network for, for them with, with many collaborators in, in these biobanks. And just, just as, a, as a first look, we looked at asthma uh, endpoints in these biobanks. So, so combining four biobanks, UK Biobank, Biobank Japan, us and, and Hunt Biobank from, from Norway. And simply by pooling uh, these four together, I think we have now accidentally run the biggest GWAS on asthma so far done. So, so that just shows you the, the potential in these types of pool data pooling exercises. And, and you can see that, that now we have 52 loci uh, 
associated with asthma, whereas if we had only looked at our own data, we, we would have stopped with eight. So it, it's not a, you know, it, it makes sense to pull this data. So, so really, when we look forward, we continue to building up the, the data resource and, and, and the, the, it's built in the way that the, the pharma companies and, and the research environment in Finland has the first look opportunities to the data, but then all the data returns to the biobanks and is available for the whole, whole community. The, we believe that the Finnish medical data genomes and technology combined with the global advantages will uh, give us opportunities not only in genetic discoveries, but also starting to think about how to do public health uh, interventions and pub, sort of new strategies for public health utilizing these data. And it's, it really takes a lot of individuals put, to put this together. So here is, here is from our first face-to-face -face meeting, the, the group, the scientific group at the time enjoying the, the, the English weather there. So thank you very much.